Happy Saturday, football fans, and welcome to the Pigskin, presented by Time and Money Saver, exclusively right here on the OH Report. My name is Brian Skronsky, taking you through week nine of the high school football season, all the action that went down right here in North Central Ohio, and to help lead me through the process, we have a guy whose legend grows every single week on this show, a dude that's more folklore than human at this point, Effie James, our media aficionado, is here, along with the head coach of Clear Fork, now off to a 9-0 start, Dave Carroll, I'm sure on a light sleep schedule right now after the party out in the valley and since this is the internet and we can pretty much do whatever we want, can you give us a little bit of insight? What, what was it like out there that the 9-0 MOAC championship fiesta last night? Well, uh, you know, you saw the field, the, the melee down there and uh, probably the, the greatest thing that a coach can experience is that locker room after a win like that. Just the hugs and you know, kids and coaches telling each other they love each other and um, you know, thanking each other for, for selling out and uh, you know, just just a great feeling. And then um, you know, hey, I'm old, so you know, I, I can't stay up too late. I mean, basically, when a football game's over uh, on Friday nights, that's past my bedtime. So any any hours I get after that, it's really stretched it. But, uh, we went home with the family. I had you know, my brother Mike, it's our D coordinator. Uh, he stayed at our place, and his uh, his son and uh, uh, his girlfriend and my wife, and uh, we had some friends from Butler come out for a little bit. And, uh, it was exciting. We were just pinching ourselves. Did it really happen? Did we really win uh, again? Good times. Uh, you guys did indeed win. Uh, without any further ado, let's jump right into the highlights, show you what went down out in Belleville last night, right now on the Richland Runback. The matchup of the night in North Central Ohio certainly did not disappoint. Mary and Pleasant visiting Clear Fork with the MOAC on the line. And Zach Homerick shakes loose early in this pivotal showdown, going all the way into the Spartans' red zone. But the turnover bug would bite the Colts right on the doorstep. Here's Trayvon Trammell, <laughs> coughs it up. Pleasant jumps all over it. So Clear Fork comes up empty, but not for long. Brennan South is going to lock in his coordinates for Homerick right here, who takes it 37 yards to the house. And Coach, since we got you here, tell us about this kid. He's just an explosive play waiting to happen every night. Yeah, uh, Zach Homerick, you know, you know, he was one of those kids that uh, really had to wait till this year to get his turn with all those other slot receivers we had the past few years. And uh, he's having a fantastic season. Uh, the play that we fumbled on uh, was the option. And we knew the way they played their defense, they came up real hard from the corner spot. So the next time we got the ball back down there, you know, we called the option pass. Holmick ran right past the corner, and South laid it in there, and touchdown. Spartans start to battle back here. You can see 14 unanswered points. How much of a dagger did that one feel like, though, Dave, at the time? That was the last play of the second quarter. Yeah, that was, you know, a momentum shifter, definitely. You know, we were hoping and praying that we could, you know, keep them out of the end zone there and go in there 7-7. Seven you know, they, they got us uh, earlier in that drive on a play. We were a little undisciplined, and the quarterback took it down the sidelines. But, uh, you know, we told our kids at halftime, hey, last year we were down 14 to nothing, so piece of cake. We're good. It's only seven points tonight, so we'll, we'll be fine. This would turn out to be the game-winning field goal after Trayvon Trammell's touchdown catch that you saw earlier. They missed the PAT. So it's 16-14, last chance for the Spartans. And I watching this again, that hit the kid actually right in the chest in the end zone. But Clear Fork hangs on for the victory. They clinch the MOAC championship, 16-14, taking down the Spartans for a second consecutive season. Mount Vernon making the trip over to Arlen Field on senior night for the Tigers, and the Yellow Jackets would sting first up seven zip here. But that was before Mansfield Senior unleashed the Super Freak. Angelo Gross getting super freaky, 41 yards to pay dirt. Now it's Cam Todd's turn. He's going to roll out, scramble for 18 yards, and give the Tigers their first lead of the night. 
Later on, it's going to be Todd with just a little flip to Gross, and it's all Angelo from here. Effie, you were saying last week that maybe this kid's in the conversation for best Tigers athlete ever? One of them. He, he absolutely is a playmaker, a, 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 no question. He came across in what looked like a regular play that was going to be stopped for about six or seven yards, and he went into another hemisphere with that speed and turned it on, and nobody's going to catch him when he gets in the open field. There's number eight was this third trip into the end zone of the night. He is unbelievable. Mount Vernon did return this kick for six late in the game after the Jackets got not one but two safeties. Oh, that's pretty uncommon. But they get swatted, though. 33-19, your final score. Kids so pumped up out in Mansfield Senior Country. They're playing the drums blindfolded. Shelby hosting Oak Harbor. Whippets have been in a free fall as of late. Still in the playoff picture, though. But that was to start the night. Jack Alexander was flexing all night long. Anybody could get it too. 13 yards scampered there for six midway through the first. Now we move on and it's Alexander hitting Clay Schultz. It is 14-0 Rockets. The Whippets had the ball control issues all night long as they have the last few weeks. Four total turnovers for Shelby in this contest. Never going to help you win games. Meanwhile, Alexander, who had five total touchdowns, was showing out. Oak Harbor wins big on the road. 35-0, Shelby has been mathematically eliminated from postseason play. Finally, we head to Lexington. This was a barn burner, folks. Minutemen looking for their fourth straight win. Madison, though, was driving early, trying to punch it in. But Lex comes up with the fumble recovery on the doorstep. Ensuing possession, Alex Green, who had a monster performance. Showing off the Jets here. Lear getting to the outside, taking off. He's going to get pushed out. Just inside the 10, Caden Stover would eventually punch that in. And we've seen Stover have big plays. We've seen Caden Berry have big plays. Now it looks like they got a third option, this kid Green F. And that's all they need going into the postseason. A, a few other weapons they're showing. It seems like this Lexington team just evolves game after game, and you can see them getting better uh, week in and week out, which is what all coaches want. You want to be playing your best football uh, come postseason time. Minuteman ran for over three bills in the first half alone. One bright spot, though, for the Rams with this youngster right here, Miles Bonds. He got loose for almost 300 yards of his own on the ground. Big numbers in this game for that kid right there. But the game was already decided. Taylor Gearhart and his bunch are now 5-4 with a 42-16 victory. Minutemen keeping themselves in the playoff chase. Not pictured in the highlight there because neither of these teams are in Richland County, but Ashland and West Holmes, what an unbelievable game this was. Double overtime. Ashland loses, though, for the third straight week, 56-49. Effie, real quick, just give me your thoughts on the Arrows and what's happened to them over the last several weeks. Well, we talk a lot about, you know, and Coach Carroll knows, playing, you know, when you're coaching or, or playing in high school sports, you really, you don't give a lot of credence to momentum and, and what, that, what that means. And... That loss to Mansfield Senior for a or against Mansfield Senior for Ashland was, I think it it done something to their to their players, and I think uh, they played with confidence before that, and after watching a little bit of football since then, they just don't look like the same team. And they have the same players, they have the same system, same coaching. I'm sure the coaches are doing well, but sometimes when you lose that edge that you had before, it's hard to gain it back. And so when things go wrong in a game where you used to just get over it and play through it, it, it becomes harder and harder to play through. And that's what it seems like Ashland's going through right now. And then real quick, uh, Lucas Cubs just dismantled River today, 62-6 to six in an afternoon affair. Is that by far the best small school program that we have this season right now, would you say? Well, certainly they have created a new tradition for Lucas, and, and I, I think they are probably the most dominant small school team that we, we've had in this area in a long time, they, and they prove it. And it's not just about uh, talking, and, and it's about really showing it on the, on the field and on the scoreboard. They, they not only beat teams, but they dominate teams. And, and they have uh, pulled together some winning ways and got some winning talent down there in Lucas. I'm really impressed and have been with them for years. Speaking of winning ways, Coach, man, what a run you guys are on right now. Marion Pleasant, though, a team that obviously is a football factory over there, pretty much during the postseason every year. And you know, I believe you coached over there at, yes. at one point in time. How creative do you have to be when putting together a game plan when you're taking on a team like that versus maybe somebody else that's not on your level? Well, with uh, Pleasant, you know, their defense is, is very incredible. You know, they, they get a lot of, uh, you know, hype about their offense and their running game. I mean, you know, however many yards rushing they have, it's a ton. And, uh, 
But their defense is what we were really concerned with because they, I think they were giving up 94 yards a game on the season after wow. eight games. Pretty impressive. Sure. And so we, we thought, you know, if we could find a way to run the football with our passing game, we, we would have a really nice night offensively. Well, you saw that didn't happen. So, you know, we knew, we thought, we were very confident we could throw the football. And uh, we were able to do that, uh, thank goodness enough, to get us that victory. Uh, but, uh, you know, their defense was not going to let us, they weren't going to let uh, Trayvon, you know, slice and dice like he's done a lot of other teams. Um, they gave our quarterback a few yards, a few rushing yards, but, uh, you know, we had to go through the air. And, you know, and then, then I saw that rain coming down before the game. Thinking, uh oh, that kind of that, that kind of puts a little uh, you know damper on the game plan. But you know our kids did a good job in the rain catching and throwing. So you know, uh, tough team, tough program. Uh, they're good every year, and um, you know we just have to you know you, you prepare for a team. I you, I don't think you really do a whole lot of different things. Um, you know in a game like that because you know with the emotions, the adrenaline, you do a bunch of different things. Uh, you don't perform as well as what, uh, you know, if you just do what, what brought you here. And that's, that's what we try to do. You had talked about the passing game having to carry you last night. And what's most interesting to me about your passing game, you play two quarterbacks and you switch them in it, throughout the game periodically. So much discussion about, you know, maybe a, a quarterback can't get into a good groove under center. On the flip side of that, though, what do you see on a week-in and week-out basis that that does to a defense not being able to have the same guy out there every single possession? How much does that wear on them throughout a game? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if it does that. I mean, we don't, we don't, we didn't last year, and 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 we don't this year. You know, it's a different kid um, that we're alternating, but you know, we don't. I don't call plays based on who's in there. You know, we feel that they both. You know, you know, we thought at the beginning of the season South was going to be a thrower and not run because he's, you know, very small, you know, built kid. But he's done a great job running the football. Uh, so it's like, you know, hey, if we think something's going to work, whether it's a run or a pass, that's what we're going to call, regardless of who's in it. We do it because both kids are really good. Uh, it gives them a break. Uh, as we said, you know, Schaefer is a very instrumental in our defense. It gives him a break to go over there and play on the defensive side of the ball. I, I've never been uh, a coach that believes if I've got two guys that are really good and they're playing the same position, uh, I'm not going to have one of them standing by me on the sidelines all the time. Uh, just so, you know, I, I, I don't think we've had any problem uh, getting anybody in a groove or. Uh, and if there if there is an issue with that, then you know the great thing is hey you you know hey Shay if you stay you finish this game and we did that earlier in the season he was doing well and uh, South wasn't so we just had Shay finish it the only time it's happened but if you look at the stats last night I believe both quarterbacks had 130 some yards passing and uh, and if you look at their season stats both of them have 900 and so yards passing as well it's, you know, it's pretty much even uh, Shay has a little more uh, rushing yards he's you know, a little bigger. Uh, a little bigger kid gets a few more yards on the ground, but uh, they, they both do a, a tremendous job. And somebody gets hurt, you know, how many, you know, through the years that I've coached, you know, your starting quarterback goes down, and you're like, oh man, well, you know, you're in trouble. The problem. That, that next guy hadn't got the reps, he's not near as good, you know. And as I've told people, uh, you know, we have a third kid. He, he's a starter on, on defense, Brady Tedder, a sophomore. And uh, we thought, we joke about it. you guys are always talking about the two-headed monster. Yeah. Right. Let's throw him in there and let's really mess up everybody in the media and do do a three-headed monster because he's good too. He's a great athlete. He can throw it and run it, and uh, but you know, obviously not needed. He's over there playing defense, so we're just going to stick with the two-headed for now. So hmm. for, for now, though, I like that he said that. <laughs> um, Coach, I always wondered. I'm glad we got you in today, but I always wondered, and I always looked at Clear Fork in a traditional sense, and I want you to talk a little bit about the. The just the transition or the um, the transition from traditional clear fork with that I know from, from being a right. young coach in football, which was wing T or, or power I, uh, double tight ends power to w to who you are today. How did that uh, transition or evolution, if you will, come come to be? Well, I think you know clear fork has evolved maybe uh, perhaps a little bit slower than the rest of the uh, high school football world because uh, you know they hung on to the uh, power game uh, for a long long time and and it worked and they had a lot of success but 
I just think it's, you know, I think most football coaches agree, not all of them, uh, Aaron Cook at Pleasant doesn't, or, you know, some of these guys are still running wing T and so forth. But to me, you know, it makes sense to spread people out. You know, tackling people in space is, is a lot harder than tackling them in, in close, uh, you know, areas. And, you know, I, I can imagine that, you know, to people that have, you know, like you that have grown up around here and seen Clear Fork football just pound, pound, pound to see us, you know, what we're doing, uh, now it probably does, uh, probably, probably a little strange, but, uh, you know. And I'm sure the, the personnel probably has to have something to do with it. It just seems like you have a Swiss Army knife of so many different guys, the two quarterbacks, the, the couple of running backs that you have. And when it seemed like last night you were an empty a lot, you, you got quite a few different guys that you can get the ball to in space and can actually make a play for you. In our, in our weight program, um, you know, the whole, you know, people think of lifting. And, and back in the day when I was in school and all that 100 years ago, you know, you want to, you know, how much can you bench press and curl and get the big muscles and all those kind of things. But our, our whole program is, is revolves around developing speed and explosive power. And, um, you know, we're, we're get, we just had through the years, we get more and more kids buying into it and, and lifting year round. And, and you're seeing the 40 times go down. You're seeing, you know, the, the explosion off the ball and kids being able to do things. And, uh, and, and the other thing too is, uh, you know, if you want to do stuff like this, you got to develop skills of throwing and catching and route running and playing in the secondary. And, uh, you know, our kids have really bought into doing stuff in the offseason. We have quite a few seven on sevens camps and things like that. So, you know, it, it does take some, some work, um, you know, as opposed to, you know, if you just, just line it up and pounding people. But uh, that's fun. I love that football. I love coaching that. But, you know, you better be bigger and stronger than, than everybody you're playing. And uh, you know, definitely when we were in the OCC, we were the we were the little guys. We were we were the small guys, the weaker guys, and the slower guys. And you know, line up and pound with those guys. You know, in my mind, wasn't wasn't going to be very you know, conducive you know, to success. To piggyback off that a little bit, I know you're thrilled to be in the MOAC. You've been on record saying that several times. Playing like size schools, it just makes sense. Do you have a little bit of regret though that maybe you got out of the OCC about a couple years too soon? Because for about a six year stretch, you guys were the little school getting picked on a little bit. And I feel like right now you probably have the most talent of any team that's in there right now. Do you, do you feel like, ah, could have got some retribution there a little bit? I, I did hear you guys mention this on your show a couple <laughs> times. And I want to go on record right now saying, no. Ah, uh, taking the high never, road, huh? All never. Right. Um, I am so thankful for our principal, Brian Brown, and our, our AD at the time, Joe Tracy, who's coaching football up at Akron right now, uh, and, and you know, our school board administration, our superintendent, for getting us in this league. I mean, 13 years, we were in it, one title. Right. And, you know, to me, that doesn't cut it. You know, the Clear Fork's better than that. And, uh, you know, Clear Fork community and the kids deserve better than that. And, and not only, you know, one title in 13 years, but a lot of those, you're getting drubbed pretty badly. And uh, when, when you're on a down cycle of athletes, it's a down cycle in the OCC. Whereas in if, if you're playing schools your own size, you're in a down cycle, you may be five and five. You know, you may be, you know, six and four. But, you know, playing in the OCC, it was, you know, three and seven, four and six, two and eight, things like that. And, uh, and maybe it would have been nice to get some retribution, but you won't go on record and say that. And that's okay, coach. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're exactly right. <laughs> but, F, let's talk about the OCC real quick. Worcester looks great, man. They've won six in a row. Lexington looks fantastic. They've won five of six. Those are the only two teams. General's already got a share of at least the OCC. If they lose to Ashland, Lexington can also get a piece. Your opinion, though, of those two teams, what run over this last six games has been more impressive to wow. you? You know, I, I would, you know, it'd be easy to say Worcester, but I, I'm only reason why I wasn't going to say Lexington is because we saw them early in the year, and, and Coach Carroll and I were talking earlier. I mean, when I watched them in the first few games of the season, I'm thinking, this team will be lucky to, to get a couple wins this year, really. And, um, but I think, and it shows on video, and when you watch the games, what they've done. They have cut down what they do and cut it down to what they do well offensively. And because of that, I think uh, they've experienced a lot of success, consistency. They're able to uh, take long drives now on offense as opposed to a lot of three and outs that we saw earlier. Uh, they are turning teams over, they're getting turnovers defensively, their, their defense, uh, I heard one of the media guys last night talking about how Lexington's defense was flying around. And I remember watching their first few games and that was not the case <laughs> earlier, and they are. They're flying around, they're playing with confidence. Um, they now have extra guys coming in making plays. I am certainly impressed and I always attribute 
it's easy to say, well, the players just turned it on. But the truth of the matter is the coaching and the motivation for those kids, something switched. And, you know, I got to give credit to Coach Gerhardt and his staff for, you know, sticking with those kids. And sometimes when you start off slow and you're, I've been in situations where you get off to a slow start, you start one and four, immediately you start thinking about next season and how to build and you start playing younger guys and trying to get them experience. But Coach Gerhardt stuck with this crew and uh, they figured out a game plan and, and gave those kids confidence. And they are on a tremendous run. They look like not only, we were talking about earlier, they may host the playoff game uh, the way that they're playing and, and the way the numbers may work out. So uh, I'm definitely impressed, even though Worcester is, is an awesome, talented team. I'm, I'm mostly impressed with, with what Lexington has been able to do here this season. I think I would agree with you. Worcester's been consistent. They score, I think, about 35 a game, and their defense holds teams to about under 20. But the Lexington team that we seen at the beginning of the year, now they're scoring 40 a game every week. Like I don't know what happened to them, but it's working out there. Keep it up, Minutemen. They had several kids have big nights last night. Probably going to make this list right now. Let's jump into our Friday Night Phenoms presented by MWD Logistics and show you who had the biggest games last night individually. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. Let's start with the super freak, Angelo Gross, the Mansfield Jr. wide receiver slash linebacker, does it all for this team, Effie. Not included on there is his punt yardage as well. He's a pretty good punter. Uh, four catches, turned that into 164 yards, a couple touchdowns, just six carries, scored on one of those, and then a defensive interception. This kid just changes the dynamic of the game for this team every single week. He's awesome. And people forget the first five games he played the quarterback position. He started at quarterback uh, for this team. He is he's certainly, uh, like I said before, he's a tremendous playmaker, and that's what you need. You know, a lot of guys are talented, but not every guy can make plays. This, this kid is a playmaker on both sides of the field, on all three uh, aspects of the games. He's special teams also. Uh, he's, he's a va valuable commodity to the Tigers, and it's scary that he's only a junior. I bet uh, moving to the MOAC, you're glad you don't have to game plan for a guy like this, Dave Carroll. Most definitely. He, uh, we saw him this summer, 7-on-7 uh, seven seven stuff over Besires, and he, you know, he's just a tremendous athlete. He can do it all. And, uh, you know, when they got uh, Cam at, uh, back at quarterback, uh, I'm sure that just uh, made they're, everybody smile. They're going to get things going a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we're going to throw in a kid from Oak Harbor who just tore up the Shelby Whippets on Friday night. Jack Alexander, a junior quarterback for them. Not a very efficient night, 8-6 team. 124 yards, though, three touchdowns, but it's the 20 carries, 94 yards, and a couple of scores. Five total touchdowns, Coach. Always a fun night when you can find Pater that many times. Well, it's it's interesting, you know, being a, you know, defensive coaches have nightmares about trying to deal with athletic quarterbacks because you can do everything right and still get scored on. And when you got a quarterback that can be efficient enough uh, to put points on the board, but yet also can run through you defensively, that just makes it tough on the defense. Uh, speaking of defense, I couldn't just pick one person, Dave, so I gave your entire squad on the defensive unit a nod here. How impressed were you with what your team was able to do, in particular in that second half, where Pleasant was able to rack up some yards, but you never let them get on the scoreboard? Yeah, I'm very proud of those kids. You know, that, that pounding, the longer a ball game goes, that kind of offense wears on a defense. Or, you know, they had two linemen over 300 pounds, the rest of them are about 260, 270. Then you have those backs that are, you know, very fast. You know, the blue ball kid, extremely fast. Uh, and the, a couple of the other kids that they put at skill for linemen last year, like 225 pound types leading the way. Um, very, very, very proud of our kids. You know, number three right there, Gabe Blouser, the kid that kicked the winning field goal, he also had a monster sack. Uh, on that last drive, so he, he did some uh, damage defensively as well as with a split. So the clear four defense, a big reason why the Colts are MOAC champions for a second consecutive season, holding the Spartans scoreless in the second half last night. The Lexington run game was absolutely outrageous against Madison last night. Over 300 yards rushing in the first half. 
I mean, and then a little bit of trickery here. You see that that looked like something that Lucas would do. Giving it to Kate Stover, he tosses it to Alex Green. So the coaching staff, they're coming up with new wrinkles in the run game. You gotta give credit to the guys up front as well. Le Lexington's been running the ball wild every week for the, about the last month and a half. Yeah, when you, when you can control the line of scrimmage on either side, you can do a lot of tricky things. The playbook opens up a lot more uh, when your down linemen are really handling the line of scrimmage. And Lexington's doing a lot of things right right now. But I would say the most important thing they're doing now is doing a great job up front uh, with their linemen. And because of that, these guys, in a normal game, these will be four or five yard games. But because now they got some space to run, they're big plays, touchdowns. They're putting 30, 40 points on the board uh, due to their offensive line play. Great. Overall, just a great job by their offense and their offensive line. We scrimmaged them back in August, and uh, to see what they're doing now, incredible, incredible improvement. Coach Gerhardt, you guys do a good job. Honorable mention there to Miles Bond of the Rams. 22 carries, 292 yards, and two scores. Let's take a look at the playoff picture right now in Division Four, Region 14. We've been following this one. Clear Fork, of course, now at the top, the number one seed now, Coach. You got to like that. And you guys, I believe, have clinched a home playoff game for Week 11. How exciting is it to know that you're going to get a play in front of your home fans one last time where you hardly ever don't play well at the Colt Corral? Well, that, you know, it's awesome, obviously. Um, you know, not just for, for us, for the coaches, the kids, um, but for the community. You know, you're getting your booster club gets more concession stand than – uh, just, to, just to to get everybody out, you know, lock up the you know, Butler, lock up Belleville. Everybody's going to be out at the game, and uh, you know, just the excitement uh, that it generates is, is tremendous. So, you know, very proud that the kids have uh, put themselves in this position. Who would you say is the top threat that you're looking at there in the top eight right now? Well, I don't know if you're familiar with Drew Pasture, the uh, mathematical uh, professor at Worcester. He has a site where he predicts all these things, and. Uh, he has the highest percentage for us to be playing um, Brian, who is, I believe, in the ninth spot right now. Okay. Um, it's, it, you know, it's just like last year. It's always a crapshoot. We try to send, you know, you get your scouts out here week 10, but I think we, we sent three different crews out last week, and we, got, we were wrong on all three <laughs> of them. <laughs> we ended up playing Lorraine Clearview, and that's one that, you know, we weren't supposed to get matched up with them, but uh, we did. Let's shift now, take a look at Division Three, Region 10, where most of our local teams are on the outside right now. Lexington, though, like you had mentioned, I don't think that they are going to be able to get enough computer points to get a home game, but the Minutemen are going to get in. They're, they're going to be playing, Effie. How dangerous do you feel like the Purple and Gold legitimately are now that they're going to be playing in Week 11? You know, I was, my one of my coaching mentors, Stan Jefferson, always told me the, um, the playoff is about stars. And when you get into the playoffs, you need your stars to rise to the top. And, and they've got probably one of the, the most talented stars, if not in this area, in Ohio, on, on uh, Lexington's team. So um, I feel confident that Lexington can compete with any of the teams in, the, in their region. Um, they have a flat-out star, and they have their kids playing their best football at the best time of the year. So um, as long as everyone stays healthy and and you know sometimes as coaches we try to uh, when we get to a certain level we try to overthink uh, what we've done to get there uh, but I don't see that happening with coach Gerhardt and his staff I think they're going to be consistent to, and true to what they've done uh, give the ball to Cade Stover on offense let him make plays on defense and let the supporting cast really support him and I think Lexington could have a good run they have solid play on both all three uh, phases of the game I think they could have a good run this year I agree. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do when they get into the tournament action. And then Norwalk as well that's in there at the number two seed right now. Just with that running back, the offensive line that they have, Chuckers could make some noise as well. Uh, Coach, final question for you, and then we'll let you get out of here. Go finish your celebration for, for wrapping up that MOAC championship. You have an opportunity for back-to-back -back undefeated regular seasons this next Friday when you travel to Marion Harding. How special is that to you to, you know, have that? You're, you're right on the doorstep, man. Yeah, it's... You know, you, the big thing is, you know, we, we've got to focus on beating Marion Harding, but it's really hard not to think about having two 10 and 0 seasons right. back to back. And, um, you know, my brother and I, you know, we grew up here, played football here. Our, our father was the head football coach at 
Butler High School before it became Clear Fork. So, you know, we've got a pretty, you know, deep tradition, uh, you know, in the Valley. Um, and just to be a part of, of that, um, you know, just feel very blessed, you know, they have to, you know, it's, you, a lot of success in, in life in all areas is being at the right place at the right time around the right people. And, uh, you know, we are very fortunate to have this group of kids that are coming through right now. All these things, this, this perseverance by a lot of people and a lot of hard work to, you know, to be able to do something like this is, is pretty special, you know, especially being from Clear Fork and uh, growing up here and, you know, watching my older brothers, watching my dad and, you know, all that. Pretty, pretty cool thing. Very, very blessed. Definitely be one of the top storylines that we're keeping an eye on next week in Week 10. Is there anything that stands out to you? Final week of the regular season, Nathan, anything that you're really looking forward to next week? Well, again, I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, th to be honest, watching Clear Fork hit that milestone. You know, two, it's hard to win football games. You know what I mean? That's the, the, the reality of it is it's tough to win football games because it's the ultimate team game. And I think that's why football people love football because it's the ultimate team game. And when you're winning, it's great because everybody feels like they're a part of it. The, the flip side of that is when you're losing, there's so many different personalities and things you have to deal with. Um, so it's great when you can win a football game. So I, I couldn't imagine going two full seasons uh, at, at the stage of Cliff Forks. And so it's, it's great to see their run. And I'm also, again, impressed with Lexington. Um, and the way they have turned things around. And, and I know it's very tough when you have, you know, 15 to 18 year old young men trying to keep their spirits up while they're losing football games. So it's, it's more and more impressive to see. Uh, I like the fact that we've got great talent in this area. Once again, not all the great talent is going to get into the playoffs. It's just flat true. But I'm looking forward to seeing the teams that are going to get into the postseason really represent this area of Ohio. Couldn't agree more, Coach. You put a bow on it right there for me. Thank you so much to Dave Carroll for joining us this Saturday and to Effie James for joining us every week. So long for us. We'll see you next Saturday right here on The Pigskin.